So as you probably know by now, AMD Fluid Motion Frames has been released in the latest drama, and a lot of people seemingly are getting Fluid Motion Frames confused with FSR 3. It's important to note that these are not the same, as they have completely different implementations. For example, FSR 3 uses in-game temporal information to generate frames, as opposed to information within a 2D image like Fluid Motion Frames uses. But obviously both implementations use frame generation, so let's talk about it. So let's just discuss the entire point of why I'm making this video. You may have noticed that in Linus's latest 40 series super review, which hopefully soon I'll be getting 40 series so I can actually review it, Linus goes on to say that they didn't end up using fluid motion frames because they weren't comfortable using it, testing it against frame generation on the 40 series super. As for AMD, you might have noticed that even though they finally launched their driver level frame generation, we didn't include it in our results. We wanted to be as apples to apples as possible, and in theory, it's really cool. You just turn it on in the adrenaline control panel, and it boosts your FPS in any DirectX 11 or DirectX 12 game. Though, like with Nvidia, they do say you need decent performance already for it to work its best, with AMD recommending 60 FPS. The problem is that we were not able to get consistent outputs such that we would be confident putting them on our graphs. Now that is a valid point, it's a pretty new technology, but it's been fully released now and really I haven't had much problems with using it as I've made a couple of videos on fluid motion frames. But he shows the FSR 3 demo video when he's talking about fluid motion frames, so it's pretty much telling the audience that FSR 3 and fluid motion frames are basically the same thing, which isn't the case. So it kind of misleads people into thinking that FSR 3 is pretty much the same thing as fluid motion frames, which is not the case. I'll just let past me explain the difference between FSR 3 and Fluid Motion Frames. So it's important to highlight the difference between FSR and AFMF. AMFF is a driver integration, which means it's tacked on within the driver, so it won't be compatible cross vendor. While FSR 3 is an in-game integration, but FSR 3 does use Fluid Motion Frames, but an enhanced version of Fluid Motion Frames. That much like standard AFMF, uses optical flow analysis, but this time it uses the game's inbuilt temporal data, such as motion vectors, to generate much higher quality frames versus standard AFMF. And how that differs to standard AFMF is that AFMF is generating frames based on 2D imagery that isn't temporal at all. So it's just taking a 2D image that's being printed on the screen, using optical flow analysis to interpret the next frame based on movement within that 2D information, and generating a frame based off that. So using standard fluid motion frames, you will get lower quality imagery coming out of it. That's an important thing to keep in mind. So you can pretty much think of it like flow frames. It uses optical flow analysis. So if you take a video and import it into this software, this software will use optical flow analysis on the GPU to generate those new frames based on the information and the motion within the footage that's being provided using algorithms. But with fluid motion frames, those extra frames are being interpreted based on the previous frame and the last frame being generated, but only in 2D, without any temporal data from the game. That's why it's a driver addition. While FSR 3 takes the temporal information in the game, such as motion vectors, to generate those frames, again based on the previous frame and the last frame generated by the game. It's just got that extra information. So we've got some screen capture here for you guys to give you some idea of what you might expect in terms of a performance uplift, but I think it's gonna have to wait for a future video to see how their fluid motion frames compare to NVIDIA when it comes to image quality and latency. And you can see this is a second problem in that video. You can see they've got the game rendered FPS, which is the actual game measuring the real FPS that the normal standard 3D render pipeline is generating. And on the right side, they've got the driver generated FPS using the AMD overlay, which is currently the only way you can measure those extra frames that you're getting with full motion frames. The problem with it is that this isn't actually representing the performance uplift that you'll actually get here because the game rendered FPS would be lower due to the fact that it's doing asynchronous compute to get full motion frames to work. As asynchronous compute is what allows the GPU 
to do optical flow analysis to generate brand new frames. So this game rendered FPS here will actually be higher if you had disabled fluid motion frames. So it is a bit misleading there as well. So now that we know the difference between FSR3 and AFMF, let's go ahead and test some games that currently support FSR3 officially to see the difference at a performance level compared to AFMF and FSR3. So we've hopped into one of the two games that I have that supports FSR3, Immortals of Avium I think it is, and we're going to start things off with FSR3 off because I want to see natively without any upscaling of any kind how does it perform, and we've got running at 1440p and these are the game settings that we're using. We will be using anti-lag and also radeon boost to start things off and we'll compare side by side the FPS at native resolution without any upscaling or frame generation to FSR3 and then we'll compare FSR3 to fluid motion frames and vice versa so let's just see how it performs. So you can see right off the bat just native resolution without any frame generation on FSR3 it's still really smooth 100 FPS but of course the purpose of this video is to see how this compares to FSR3 and then fluid motion frames. So it's a decent experience and our 1% lows or 99th percentiles are sitting around 77. So without FSR3 or AFMF, we got around 86.54 FPS on average and 72.74 FPS on the 1% lows. So a decent overall experience, we're getting way above 60 FPS at these settings. So it'll be interesting to see how much more FPS we get with FSR3 and how that compares to AFMF. So now we've gone ahead and enabled fluid motion frames and we've also got FSR3 enabled on balance, but we don't have frame generation on. And as you can see, with full motion frames on and FSR3, the super resolution enabled, you see we get around 240 FPS. It's a bit of a double a FPS than before at native. And I've got to say, it is a tiny bit more inconsistent when using full motion frames, but we'll see how that compares with frame generation on FSR3. Our frame time seemed to be pretty consistent, just as consistent as native resolution. Like in some areas, we're even getting like 300 FPS, like right here. That's seriously impressive considering without full motion frames, we were getting about 100. So as you can see, with full motion frames and FSR3, not frame generation, but again, we still have AFMF, we're getting around 235.83 FPS on average, which is 173% more than at native resolution. So that's an extremely impressive uplift using full motion frames. So now we've gone ahead and disabled full motion frames, and this time we're gonna enable frame generation on FSR3 to see the difference between FSR3's frame generation and AFMF. So FSR3 is set to balance once again, but this time frame generation is on. And as you can see, we're sitting around 200 FPS. So it is actually lower than using fluid motion frames and FSR super resolution. Maybe it is a tiny bit more consistent in terms of the frame pacing, but I'm not too sure. Maybe there is a tiny bit less latency using FSR3's frame generation. I'm not too sure about the quality as well. You really have to pixel peep between all these upscalers to see the difference in that. Like you can see around here, we, we would have gotten around 300 FPS using fluid motion frames. So it is like 50 FPS lower than using fluid motion frames and FSR super resolution. And you can see with FSR3 and frame generation just on its own without AFMF, we're getting around 201.90 FPS, which is about 133% more than native resolution and about minus 14% compared to AFMF and FSR super resolution. So using FSR3's inbuilt frame generation, you're gonna get less FPS compared to AFMF and super resolution, which is quite interesting. I thought it was gonna be better using FSR3's better implementation of fluid motion frames, but anyway, it is what it is. Another big thing to point out as well is that the 1% lows are actually a lot lower using FSR3, which in the real world didn't really equate to much of a difference in terms of fluidity of the game. I didn't really feel much of a difference. In my opinion, it actually felt more smooth using FSR3. So now I've gone ahead and disabled FSR3 completely here without FSR3's frame generation and we've only enabled fluid motion frames here. So now with fluid motion frames on its own, we're getting around 160 FPS. So it's lower than FSR3's frame generation compared to just using AFMF on its own without super resolution. So that's interesting to know there. But our 1% lows do appear to be a lot higher compared to using FSR3's frame generation as well as super resolution. But does that actually equate to real world smoothness in the game? Not really. And in fact, like I said before, FSR3 did appear to be a lot smoother when using FSR3's frame generation. And as you 
you can see with just AFMF, we got about 156.28 FPS on average and the 1% loads that are around 131.85. So make of that what you will. This time we're just gonna test FSR 3, the super resolution on its own without frame generation and also without fluid motion frames. The last thing that we're gonna do is test AFMF and FSR 3's frame generation at the same time, which will be pretty interesting to see, not gonna lie. We are going a bit overboard with the comparisons here, but anyway, I hope you enjoy anyway. So with just FSR 3 on its own set the balance, we're getting in the neighborhood of around 130, 140 FPS, 150 FPS. So obviously, without frame generation, it is going to be less, and that's obviously to be expected. It does feel a tiny bit smoother without frame generation, and if you pixel peep, maybe it is a bit higher quality, I'm not too sure about that. And with just super resolution on its own, we got around 136.58 FPS, which is 58% more than native. But our 1% lows, we got around 108.24, which is 17% more than FSR 3 frame generation, which is interesting. And I did note that it was a tiny bit smoother when using super resolution on its own. So maybe that could be a contributing factor, but I'm not sure. So now the last thing to try is whether or not we can use FSR 3's frame generation and AFMF at the same time. And I'm really interested to see if you can actually do that. And we've got fluid motion frames enabled and it's active. And we've got FSR 3 set to balance and frame generation on. And as you can see with both frame generations active, it's not a good experience. There's a lot, there's a lot of screen tearing and there's also quite a lot of artifacting as well. So it's maybe not the best experience, it's maybe not recommended to do this. And you can see our FPS is lower than using like fluid motion frames and super resolution. And it's also lower than using just FSR 3 and frame gen on its own. Yeah, it's not really a good experience here. You can see just a sheer amount of artifacting here. I mean, we just did this for shits and giggles, just to see how it performs. And yes, it does perform worse. Like you can see there's a whole ton, shit ton of fucking artifacting when she blinks like yeah there is a whole whack ton of latency as well so yeah i wouldn't really recommend putting both frame generations on but uh, yeah and it's not surprising that with afmf and fsr 3's frame generation it is a considerably worse experience with much lower average FPS and much lower one percent lows than using afmf with fsr 3 super resolution or just using FSR 3's frame generation. And in the interest of saving time, we also tested Avatar Frontiers of the Pandora 1440p. And as you can see, this time around, AFMF and FSR 3 using frame generation, so both frame generation technologies, netted us a huge increase, a humongous increase in FPS. AFMF is still performing better than FSR 3's frame generation, which is also interesting to point out. Now, obviously I wouldn't recommend putting AFMF and FSR 3's frame generation together as I did observe even an avatar increase in latency and also increase in screen tearing and a lot of smearing and artifacting while playing the game. But I also did observe using FSR 3 frame generation on its own using its own frame generation, it was a tad bit smoother than using it with fluid motion frames. And that obviously is gonna come down to its better integration and also using that extra temporal information unlike fluid motion frames does. Now this video was just supposed to compare AFMF and FSR 3 frame generation, but of course I got lost in the mix when it comes to all these different combinations. But it ended up turning this video into just a short little comparison and to literally testing every possible combination, fluid motion frames and FSR 3 and everything like that. So yes, AFMF and FSR 3 are completely different and it shows in the FPS differences. But once again, FSR 3's implementation of fluid motion frames is going to be better in terms of quality, latency, and artifacting and everything else. And it's just gonna probably be a more consistent experience overall. But if you want the most performance, then go ahead and use AFMF and FSR 3. It don't mind me. And because of that, most likely in the future, we'll probably have FSR 3's frame generation compared to DLSS frame generation because it's more apples to apples. They're both temporal upscalers. Anyways, guys, that's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Also, make sure to check out this video where we try fluid motion frames in four of the most popular Steam games right now.